Hello viewers, today I am going to take you through a surgical procedure for a chronic acromioclavicular joint dislocation. Now the procedure that we are going to do today is called modified Weaver Dunn procedure. I have already uploaded few videos uh, about ACG reconstruction and if you are visiting my channel for the first time, I would uh, request you to subscribe to this channel as you will find many useful videos which will be extremely useful in your clinical practice. So today my goal is to take you through step by step as how to perform a modified Weaver Dunn procedure for a chronic acromioclavicular joint dislocation. So our patient today is a 38 year old gentleman who fell on his shoulder um, around four and a half months ago and did not seek any medical advice now presented to us with pain in his left shoulder. Um, and a prominent lump on top of his shoulder. And if you see this x-ray, you can see that the coraco uh, clavicular distance is increased. There is discongruity of acromioclavicular joint and there is a complete subluxation. Uh, it looks like at least type 3 kind of injury and also you can see associated degenerative changes. So our today, our plan is to do a modified Weaverdon procedure in order to take his pain away and correct his deformity. So this is our theater position. We do this uh, in a beach chair position. Um, of course, you need to have a shoulder table or you have to reverse the table to get this into this position. You get your anesthetist to put the tube and then turn the head on the opposite side so that you have got good access right from uh, the sternal lodge onto the lateral end of the clavicle. Now, my trolley is going to be on my left hand side and my screen, C-arm screen will be right in the front so that I have got access all the time and this is my C-arm. Now I'm not going to tell you how to position the C-arm in case you want to fix uh, a acromioclavicular um, joint because I've already uploaded a video. I would advise you to see that video that will beautifully explain what should be the position of C-arm and how should you position the C-arm to get a perfect circle of coracoid. So I'll skip that and we'll move on to the skin incision. So one thing I would uh, recommend uh, if you're doing any surgery is start using this marking pen. Uh, marking a skin incision is a very good practice and you're not going to lose anything by marking. So I always mark it. Now this is your landmark. So this is the lateral end of the clavicle. You can see this bulge very clearly seen. This is the roughly the acromion. This is the coracoid which I have felt here. Now you can make your incision like a brass strap as shown in my other video in which I have fixed an acute dislocation. This is chronic so I am going to use a horizontal incision which will be just inferior to the clavicle. Now this is your clavicle. You center this incision um, onto the coracoid so that you have got access medially as well as laterally. Now before you do any surgeries in and across shoulder joint always use local anesthetic with some adrenaline and this will help you to reduce your bleeding uh, because it is quite a vascular area. So whenever you are dissecting skin or platysma, this decreases the risk of bleeding. So it comes as a pre-mixed formula. So I will definitely advise you to start using it in areas where you cannot use the tunicase. So I will just wait for a few minutes and then we will start our skin incision. So we just waited a few minutes. I'll try my best so that my hand is not coming in front of the camera uh, because then Rakesh won't be happy. So I'm just going to make my skin incision. So straightforward, you don't have much important structures here. So just take the skin incision, take the skin down and keep dissecting in a layered fashion. So I'm just cut the skin. I'm just going to take put some self retaining retractors, do some hemostasis and then I will join you. So, so far we have just taken the skin and subcutaneous tissue down. You don't uh, see uh, much fat here, especially in thin patient. Now, I'm not a great fan of uh, cautery and you, if you have seen my videos uh, in the past, you will see I rarely use cautery. But on this occasion, this is one time I would recommend you to use cautery. So, this is my clavicle, you can see it, if uh, um, Rakesh can show it, this is the clavicle. So I'm just going to put, I'm just going to take a diathermy and try 
to raise a thick full thickness flap with help of the cautery. So I'm just going to keep dissecting and raise a full thickness flap on exposing the lateral end of the clavicle. So that is the first step. So expose the lateral end of the clavicle. You need to see the clavicle so that you can carry on. So let me reposition my retractor and then I will join you back. My self retaining retractor off. I have just raised this thick flap using the diathermy. You need to have a thick flap here because repairing of this thick flap is extremely important at end of the procedure. So you can start seeing this the clavicle. This is the lateral end of the clavicle. So again using the diathermy I am just going to identify the lateral end of the clavicle and you can see this is the lateral end of the clavicle. So once I dissect around the lateral end of the clavicle and it is spit mobile, I will join you back. So now I have uh, exposed the lateral end of the clavicle, you can see a lot of degeneration and that is what happens and this was seen on x-rays as well. In chronic cases, you will see that the lateral end of the clavicle is degenerated. Hence, you have to excise uh, around 5 mm, 3 to 5 mm of lateral end of the clavicle. In acute cases, you don't need to do that. But here, my next step will be to excise the lateral end of the clavicle with a saw. So when you are excising the lateral end of the clavicle, mini saw is the best equipment. Unfortunately, um, my OT assistant OP is telling me that it is just broken. Uh, which is unfortunate. Now when you are making or when you are taking the lateral end of the clavicle, you should take it slightly obliquely. Don't take it in this direction, but go slightly oblique in this direction. Because that will help um, when you are trying to reconstruct and trying to tie the, the, the acromioclavicular ligament, it helps. So I am just going to try to make this osteotomy with a sharp osteotom because I don't have any other option today. Otherwise, mini saw is much pre preferable. So I am just going to carry on like this and once I have done it, I will show you how it looks. So this is, uh, we have uh, done our osteotomy with some difficulty because we didn't have the saw but if you have the saw, this will be very easy. Now next is just to make this, this sharp edge. You can use a file or you can use the saw just to make it smooth so that it doesn't irritate the skin. Now your next step will be to dissect in subclavicular region and to identify our coracoid process. So I'm just going to reflect few fibers of deltoid uh, because without that there is no way you will be able to get into the subcoracoid space and you will see a lot of scarring especially on the undersurface and I can see a lot of scarring. So I'm just going to I'll just try to be on the side. I'm just going to resect some some scar tissue here so that I can at least feel the coracoid. And once I feel the coracoid, then you are in the safe home. So you can see, I won't be able to show you, but I can feel the coracoid with my finger. That is the first step. And once I have felt the coracoid, I'm going to put a homan onto the lateral end because you don't want to be putting anything over the medial end. As mentioned in my other videos, there are two sides to the coracoid. One is the lateral side, which is the safe side and the other side is the suicide. You don't want to be going on the medial side. So let me clear this up slightly and I can clearly see the coracoid. Uh, give me another small woman or let's have the McDonald. So all this is coracoid. So we are, we have got good access to the coracoid. I'm just going to use some nibbler to clear it up and I will show you how coracoid looks. So this is our coracoid. I have drawn it for you. This is the base, this is the tip, this is the medial side or the suicide, this is the lateral side. So you have got good access. There is some scarring on the inferior aspect. You can see it here. I am just going to resect it because this is not going to add anything except for having difficulty when we are passing our endo button. So just going to release um, this scar tissue from underneath and then uh, we are ready for our next step. So once you have uh, done that, your next step is to identify the CL ligament. Now CL ligament, this is the coracoid tip and this is the acromion. So this is your CL ligament. So your next step will be to trace this ligament towards the end of the acromion, which is here. 
some people will recommend using uh, taking it out with a piece of bone but I don't so I'm just going to use something like a diathermy to dissect it and take it as much length as possible so this is my seal ligament I'm just going to um, use some fiber wire to put a loop so that we are able to pass it towards the lateral end so let's first resect it and then we will use fiber, fiber wire and do a whip stitch so I'm just going to use a diathermy to take as much length as possible of this ligament so this is off if I can show it to you I think it needs to be taken off a little bit more so just a little bit from there so this is your CA ligament so I'm just going to use some whip stitch so that we can tie it towards the lateral end of the clavicle so I'm just using a mayo needle to do a whip stitch as you would do uh, for a preparation of an ACL graft I'm not going to explain everything here and once I have done the whip stitch I will come and join you so this is our whip stitch done and it's quite solid so this is we are going to attach this to the lateral end of the clavicle now our next step will be to make drill holes in the clavicle for our weaver done procedure and passing our endo button so I have marked three areas this is one area this is two area this is area number three so this is for weaver done procedure and this is for modification of weaver done so I am going to take a 2 mm drill bit and it comes at a bit an awkward angle and then try to exit on the lateral side so this is what we will use it to pass our ligament so you want to drill so that it comes towards the area that we have resected not on the inferior surface so this is one done we will do the same thing uh, onto our second hole and then we'll be ready for our clavicle load so we have made these two holes one and two now this is roughly usually 25 mm from the end of the clavicle now we have already resected few little bit so it's just roughly 2 mm and then I'm going to pass the guide wire for the 4 mm cannulated screw so just give me a second this is our guide wire gone now if you see if you are in the right direction since this is an open procedure you can see everything this is centered over the coracoid as well so I'm just going to pass this across to the coracoid and then we will check it in the C arm for its position so that looks fine so let's check it in the C arm so now you can see our guide bar has uh, gone through and uh, uh, if you watch my other video you have to have a perfect circle this is not a perfect circle but as we can see everything so it's not that important so our next step will be to pass a 4 mm guide wire sorry 4mm 4, 4 drill over our guide wire now this is an extremely crucial step because you don't want your guide wire to go deep so you have to be really slow and keep checking in between that your guide wire is not progressing any further so we'll take some images so you can see that uh, our drill is right on top of our coracoid but our guide wire has not migrated so I would request you to keep checking from time to time to ensure that your guide wire is not going deep so this is the loop endo button that we have prepared uh, using the fiber wire which comes out from the ACL when you do an ACL and this is um, you can get it very cheap these two endo buttons so if you want to learn how to make it I have already uploaded a video in which we have fixed a fresh injury of acromaclavicular joint so I have explained how to make it so I'm not going to explain that so I'm just going to make use an artery clip and pass it artery clip or anything like a forcep to pass it from top of the clavicle push it down um, let's have a artery clip 
So it's anything to push it down, you can use K wire. So this is retrieved here. And the same way, you are going to clear it up and pass it through the coracoid. So let me just clear it up and then I will show you how I pass it. So this is our hole. So I pass it through the hole and I'm just going to push it deep and I think it's gone. So once it flips, you will not be able to pull it. So I'm not able to pull it. You can see that I'm tugging it really hard. It is flipped, but still it's a good practice for you to check it on C-arm. So we are going to check on the C-arm that this has flipped. So this is this bit done. Now we will use something like a straight needle to pass our CA ligament through the lateral end of the clavicle. So now we have our two ends. Uh, uh, I'm just going, Akash is holding the one end, OP is holding the other end. What I wanted to stress is this will come, this drill has come through the lateral end of the clavicle. So I'm just using a straight needle to pass uh, the suture on each side. So it can be quite fiddly. So let me just grab hold of it and then I will join you back. So this is the loop. So I'm just going to take this fiber wire through this loop and then I'm going to pull this out. And this way you should be able to easily get one end out. Same way we are going to pass through the other end and then make a loop and then take it out. So this is our loop endo button. This is the two ends of the CA ligament. So you can see when I'm tightening it, this is going um, towards the lateral end of the clavicle. So the first thing that you do is, this is a self-tightening mechanism. So you get your assistant to push it down. So just somebody is going to push it down and then try to tighten it as much as you can. You know, you cannot tighten, over tighten this. So try to over tighten it. If at all, you need to be really, really tight. So let's tighten this and then take an x-ray to see how it looks when I have tightened it. So when you are tightening it, you get your assistant to push it down and then tie this suture and then take the x-ray. So you can see now that uh, the coraco acromial space is nicely reduced and our ACJ joint is uh, well aligned. So the last step uh, for reduction will be to tightening our two sutures for our acromioclavicular ligament towards the lateral end of the clavicle. So we have passed the two ends towards the end of the loop but, uh, endo button and then just we are gently going to tighten it. That's it. And this is our final repair done. So take knife and then cut this. And our next step will be to just give it a wash and then start our closure. So this is our final reconstruct and it looks pretty good. So this is how uh, you do a modified uh, weaver done procedure. Our next layer, next step will be the closure of those thick fascia which we reflected off from the clavicle. I'm just going to take this thick layer and I'm using a number two ethy bond to do our repair. So this repair is one of the most important steps of this procedure. So I'm just going to tie this up. If Akash, you can reflect the skin for me with the lion back. And I will show you how. So this is one end done. You can put interrupted sutures. I like to do a continuous layer. So I'm just going to run a continuous layer. And once it is done, I will show you how it looks. So this is our that thick layer closed. Now next I'm going to use 204 uh, interrupted um, some dermis. And then we will use subcuticular for skin. And I will show you how it looks in the end. So this is our skin closed. So I'm just going to put some non adherent dressing. And we are going to give him a sling for roughly four to six weeks and then we'll get him going. So we was, this was a demonstration of how to do a modified weaver done procedure for a chronic acromioclavicular joint dislocation. Uh, it is uh, not a very simple operation, but 
If you follow the steps, I'm sure you will be able to do this uh, surgery uh, with ease, with great results. I think key is once uh, you have done this reconstruction, you should immobilize uh, the shoulder for at least four weeks and then gradually progress them for physiotherapy. Uh, if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. Please do subscribe and do share our channel. Thank you.